We're homebrewed, and uh, we started this band because my mother loves music so much. And she can sing, and she can play, and why not? <laughs> and I want to say that I grew up in a family that went everywhere singing, and I am so lucky to have been around a mother and a father that both sang together in the car. We were like the little car going out into the mountains, and it was like singing, the little singing car. So obviously I could never stop doing it. Please oh, here don't. Here we are, homebrew. Never stop singing, never stop loving. Yeah. Maybe next time we'll bring in a bigger crowd. Maybe next time one day they'll come around to our sound. They listen to the words Maybe next time They'll tell a friend about what they heard Maybe next time The people will say Man, that boy can really play Maybe next time They'll all sing along And know every word to the song Homebrewed happened because the whole time the kids were growing up, we were always playing music and singing and all of those kind of things. But then when they got older, and, and Roland and I had a lot of big parties, and we always had live music. And they were around live music. Anytime we had a big party, we hired a band. And so it just became the great thing to do. As they got a little bit older and got some kids of their own, we started having this big celebration around Labor Day. And we would hire four or five bands to come. And my son Daniel started writing music and writing songs to create these pageants. And then he would come to us with the words and the songs and say, listen, we got to put together a band so we can perform these songs that we put together. And so Jamie started playing. I started singing harmony. And we would have the party and we would go out on stage and we came up with the name Homebrewed because Daniel and I also made all the beer for these parties. We had four or five different brews that we would create in June and early July so that we would have good on tap homemade beer.
said I don't want my man to spread disease He has a little look between our knees Just a little look A far where a bruise is surely I, I started writing rock operas as, I mean, there's a few different ways to answer that question. Uh, the other thing that the rock operas have done as a writer is it lets me write about something other than myself. I've been in this band, Homebrewed, um, and we started out as kind of a, like a vocal harmony type group, uh, playing with my brother, Jamie, my mom, Marcy. Um, and we had, I guess you need the context of this Labor Day event that we do. So um, we played at this Labor Day event that a bunch of friends and families all get together on Labor Day. We've been doing it for many years. Uh, and it started out playing around a campfire with acoustic guitars. And gradually over time, um, you know, we got a generator, so we'd have electricity. We built a stage so people could perform on stage. Um, and then one day I bought an electric guitar. My friend had these pigeons. He was telling me about how they they will fly back to their nest. If you take them away from their nest, they always come back. And I thought, well, that's kind of an interesting story uh, that turned into a rock opera. After writing one, it was kind of primitive and rudimentary. There were only like four songs in the whole thing. Uh, but it was so much fun that it kind of turned into this whole other thing that has been going on for several years now. I write one a year, basically. Uh, that's kind of how I got into rock operas, and um, hopefully we can continue to develop this art form for whatever it is by just continuing to go beyond and add new elements over time. Well, our funky feathered friend had a bad start to his weekend. He was trying to get home when he was blown up by a bomb.
so it became homebrewed. And lucky for me, they decided that I was the queen bee. how exciting that is for a, a mom to have her kids call her the queen bee and here she comes the queen bee so basically that's how it all evolved and then for four or five years Jamie uh, and Daniel and I would get together and we would just play together and and we have friends that are really good musicians and they would come over and we would play together and the band just started to really take form. Uh, and Daniel continued to write these rock operas. So every, it, it became really, everybody looked forward to the fact that we were gonna have this performance of the new rock opera at the Labor Day blowout. And Humphrey just, played more and more and more musicians came in. One of the things that Jamie always says, the best way to sound good is to surround yourself with good musicians. And boy, is he ever right on that one. <laughs> Where did homebrewed come from? So I was in a relationship with a member of the Hill family, cousin, and her name was Marlena. And so I started coming to family gatherings out at Ruthie and Jamie's place. And of course, Marcy and Rowan were always there. And it's just a beautiful spot. It's so cool even driving into it for the first time. And then you get out there and I realized they were looking for a drummer. And the first couple times I just kind of banged around on hand drums. And then you start hearing about this idea of homebrewed. And it's been going on and these guys have been playing music Right in my backyard, I grew up in St. Mary's, they're in Ritchie County, and they're out here playing folk tunes and covers, and then they got some original stuff. They got some hot new artists that I hadn't heard about. You know, a lot of musical influence going on. I think that Homebrewed is an idea that was there long before I became involved with the situation. But then the band grows out of it. Daniel starts doing all these rock opera kind of things but, you know it's beyond the music it is this thing that we get to do together that is homebrewed and the music is just a part of that and we have this great musical family where everyone can play with each other it's really just a beautiful thing is what it is So I started playing bass about a decade ago and uh, played with a few bands and then eventually met up with uh, Jamie and Daniel and all those guys, started playing music with them and uh, that's kind of when the whole rock opera thing started. The golden touch. 
Is it what you expected? I see the light So what usually happens is Daniel will write all these tunes and then he'll come to us with the lyrics and kind of a uh, rough draft of the melody and um, we just kind of expound upon that and uh, he's very open to suggestions so like we have say on which way the music's gonna go and whatnot love playing music um, I will keep doing it as long as I can and um, it's great to do it with these people <laughs> <laughs> this says that quantum time travel doesn't follow back to the future rules no, no, no. definitely not oh dear definitely not here I was basing all of my science <laughs> off of back to the future <laughs> right you're right I mean, well, if you don't have upset, Back so. to the Future as your landing zone for time travel, then what else do you have? The, the Time Machine time. novel sucks. I read it. It's, it's not good. I mean, it's only We're still got some set pieces to make. What, are we going to make a time machine or something? We could turn the bus in the middle into a time To a time machine. Yeah, yeah. So it'll have to be... Well, but no, but the people in the bus. The bus the it's got to be a time machine. Instead of a paddy wagon or a... I don't... I don't... See, okay. it's, it's it was, science it was, fiction. Yeah. If you have, like, a superpower <laughs> where you could just time travel yourself, yeah. that's just fiction. Wait, that's, oh. that's just bullshit. Okay. <laughs> if you have a machine, though, then science. Science. It would be cool. All right. We, we do have, have a time machine. Flux capacitor in the back somehow. Yeah, well... Watch it with Lux. Yeah. Casey wait. wants a hoverboard now. We'll have like a hoverboard dance squad or something. With this kind of thing, you kind of have to have your plot be pretty straightforward if people are going to even come close to understanding it. Yeah, that's it. So, well, most of the people, really people understand how that works. I have the idea of getting those kids hoverboard things. This one's oh, yeah. Casey mentioned the hoverboard. Nothing's going yeah. <laughs> Have the dancers be on hoverboards. No, they don't have the dancers on. That'd be pretty cool. The dancers. The dancers. Oh, yeah, the band. The band on the band. It'd be like the trampoline over this one. Yeah, we can do that. We'll have to practice a lot. I think choreograph dancing on the stage is also something we can do. Except the band on the band. We could get into choreograph dancing. Yeah, we might fall We go like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, y
wait for a million years just to see your face. I guess the band Homebrewed itself, the name kind of implies that it's a that it's a family. We are kind of a brood, you know. I've I've been I've felt like part of the Hill family for when I since I moved to New Jersey back 28 years ago. Daniel Hill was my very first best friend, and Marcy was a teacher at the school. She wasn't my teacher, but she still saw me and was like, "You should be friends with my son." Yeah, I think the rock opera thing is really cool. I like I like being able to tell a story from song one to from a beginning to an end, not just in one song, but in a whole album, you know, and it really gives you a chance to, to, to keep expanding on the story without having to stick to a certain, to try to get your whole thought into one song. You can go ahead and make it into a bunch of songs, you know, and I think that's a wonderful, wonderful concept. And I'm really glad that Daniel, Daniel started doing these. So I'm sure, I'm sure that us being so such good friends really probably lends itself to being able to have such a good musical conversation. We we uh, are already good at having normal conversations, and so like we, I, I think we kind of know where each other's mind is going anyway. And so when when we start doing these, when we start doing longer jams, and it, it you got to kind of just listen to what the other people are saying. And, and there's seven of us in the band, so it's it sometimes there's a lot of. Or, for everybody to contribute a little bit at one time, sometimes it's a little, a little chaotic, maybe. Um, so, so for one person to be able to lead the conversation and people to listen to it, and then I think add their contribution to it, it really, it makes for a much. It, it, you want to be able to listen to it and, and and you know, and understand what's going on, just like any any conversation. You know, I'd love to to do more gigs and stuff, you know, but all of us all have families and stuff too you know so i mean we, we plan we pack in as much music as we can <laughs> as we can really do without making our wives too angry at us <laughs> and uh but given given you know given an opportunity to not any of us have to go back to work anymore we would probably just do this full time and have a wonderful wonderful time at it you know what kind of parliament would steal somebody's guitar I'm not much of a guitar player. I'm a, I'm a, I can sing and I certainly enjoy myself. But now I'm surrounded with the fabulous guys, fabulous. Uh, and so we've got a band that that sounds good and makes really, really good music. A lot of original music too. That's one of the wonderful things about it. It's our stuff. And. It's just been a, a bunch of fun, and certainly one of the joys of my life. For me, it's all about the artistic expression and just playing the music itself. I mean, it's it's. It brings me joy. Playing music with with these two is just, I mean, it's even another level because you have this connection. And um, I mean, just being able to, to express yourself and then help them express themselves with the things that they come up with. Yeah, I mean, the, the band is, it has always been about the creative journey. And then we've added all these, the other members to, to help that along and to, to let them, you know, further their creative journey. I mean, it's, they're all just, they're just incredible musicians and they're always really glad to get the opportunity to play music with us. And, and that is an honor.
yeah, so I knew Charlie and Bert and those guys just as friends and started going to the Hills, you know, Labor Day party and got to know them that way. And we started making connections about playing music and everything. One thing led to another over the years and I started jamming with them and they sort of welcomed me into the pack more or less. And I guess I just had something a little different to share that, you know, was a different flavor, different ingredient. And that's still kind of the way I see that. And yeah, we've sort of been cultivating this thing and Daniel's been writing the rock operas over the years and asked me to be part of it. And then we started recording those. And yeah, we're here today. I've been involved with all the rock operas except one. But yeah, I pretty much let Daniel take the helm and, and I basically just come to him with any ideas I have and, and he's very open to all of them. And you know, I don't put any pressure on for any of these ideas and um, hopefully some of them land and in the past they have a little bit, just a little bit of that flavor. It's, it's like when I get asked about my dreams, there's a final, like there's a finality about that but I just don't sort of see it end. Just keep on keep it on. Our release party this evening, it's, it's kind of a lot of things to a lot of people, and, um, it, but above all, it's a celebration, kind of a, a collective effort over years now. And uh, this particular rock opera, we've been working on the last couple of years. Uh, specifically. Um, so the journey really is a lot of it. And, and then what prints out is this disc with everything on it and a nice package and it's beautiful. I, I keep going back to sort of the imagery of it all being summed up on this disc and that that can be really philosophical if I'm not too careful. And without these recordings and things, it that is all it is, it is just an experience one time and it's gone, like taking a breath of air and releasing it and, and there's another one and, and another one. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> I think one of the coolest parts of being in this band is watching how it has progressed over the years. The different songwriting and the, we've had new members, we've added Ryan in and out and uh, you know I've, we've gotten to see Jimmy progress on keys which he just kind of picked it up out of nowhere and said I'm gonna do this and then uh, we've had several previous albums that we recorded and each one you can tell like oh man the band is getting better this is tighter we're getting a better idea of how to change these jams and how to how to write songs to tell the story better of course daniel's been just top notch at the rock opera ideas and uh, so this one is just just a really great example of that listening back to the previous album and then seeing what we've done on this one and then it's, it's amazing it's it's so much of a higher level both in songwriting and the the way we've carried it out, the camaraderie of it all. Uh, so I think that's the, this event is just a really great culmination of us being able to celebrate how much this thing has grown as a community and as a band, and to see what we're doing now compared to what we were. There's just this thing that we've created, and. Like it, 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 it needs to be shared, but I mean, there's just, you know, life is just, it seems like a rat race anymore. And like, there's just so much going on and, and like uh, strife and everything. And I think it's really important to just sometimes just stop and turn all that off and create something. You know, draw a picture, write a poem, compose some music to it. And then, then it becomes this thing that is that I mean it almost it almost has to be shared because it gave 
me and, and, and us, the band, so much joy that it, it needs to be shared with other people. You know, they need to enjoy that too. Creating art is goes back to the to the something else I've always said is how euphoric it is to create something that's I mean it's like magic, you know, it's like a you know an elixir. Mixing stuff together until you, you have this new creation. I think that these kinds of uh, gatherings are really important, that we make these connections and that we foster them. What Homebrew is doing is a sign of things to come because they really seem to be, you know, helping to build the trust among people that, that you know, allows a healthy community to develop. Like, like Homebrew has really brought this opportunity to us. We wouldn't have had a chance to share um, without them. And it's just, that's so we are kind of called to pay it forward in that way as well, you know? Oh, hey, man. Hey, 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 hey. This one's working. Hey, is this thing on? So what a what a, a wonderful looking group of people. Woo! <laughs> <laughs>